Hello everybody, today I have the pleasure to propose to you this uh, key 13 entitled Nature Regaining Our True Nature. Well, this is really fascinating topic and also one of the three portals for me which are quite conventional but bringing you toward new perspective and also probably to enlarge your field of consciousness. Nature energy and creativity for me are some ways to enlarge the perspective of a very uh, down-to-earth perception, that to say purely physics. It's also metaphysics in a certain extent. So I'm going to start with a, a quote from Einstein who says something very beautiful and showing that once you are in a process of observing, analyzing nature in general, even on a, let's say, scientist perspective, and um, you cannot not recognize the beauty and the magnificence of this potential will and um, spirit under it. He said the following, everyone who is seriously involved in a pursuit of a science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe a spirit vastly superior to that of man and one in the face of which we with modest powers must feel humble. Indeed, it brings you grateful and uh, it generates the admiration and brings you in a phenomenon of marveling at life. Because once again, the more you seek, the more you find, and especially on this perspective of science, because science is a wide word. There is many departments, there are different disciplines, astronomy, biology, uh, botany, and so on so far. You have so many. If you just focus on um, astronomy, which is science of um, let's say, analyzing the, the cosmos and so on. Even this word, cosmos, cosmos, literally, uh, from the Greek, it means order. Why? Because everything in nature tends to a certain harmony. It comes from the chaos, and it brings a certain notion of harmony in the sense of equilibrium, balance of life. This is the principle of duality, as we saw, the good, um, let's say, a balance of the forces, a reaction forces, and so on. And actually, this is interesting because even on this single point of view, our universe is possible, it's just a kind of miracle because it's the good dosing, dosage, in between the four forces, the main ones, which are first uh, gravity, secondly, it is electromagnetism, third, it is the weak uh, nuclear force, and the fourth, the strong um, nuclear force. So, the, the fact that the life is possible on Earth is just a question of really, really precise fine-tuning. And actually, without any, I mean, just a little bit more, a little bit less, we have been burned, we have been, uh, let's say, uh, frozen and so on, and life wouldn't be possible on Earth. If you want another analogy, it's like if um, you, um, you try to shoot a target with a very, a very small target, like one centimeter by one centimeter, so you can imagine how big it is, and you are, um, you are at a distance of 14 billion light years a distance and you reach it and this is exactly the metaphor of the probability that life is possible on earth and that all orchestration of the universe is balanced and is concretely it is feasible possible so it's a it's really brings you the the notion of recognition and also gratitude in general well, another analogy would be the fact to put some different components of uh, aircraft okay, on, the, on the floor over uh, hundreds and thousands of kilometers. Okay? So there is millions of them, really tiny one. And after a tornado, okay, like randomly, at the end, you will see, you will admire a plane. And then you will say, hey, just good luck. 
So we can consider that um, probably uh, chains is extremely precise or really deeply lucky. This is a kind of uh, sarcasm because actually, once again, I repeat myself, it's not proselytism, we have to believe in something and so on. Uh, but it's difficult to not to believe after so many proofs, official factual proofs of the fact that there is really short probability that life is possible. Well, let's continue with the notion of uh, admiration of uh, observation nature, because if we focus on uh, Leonardo da Vinci, which is for me one of the greatest scientists from the second millennium, okay, he was almost everything. He was an artist, a painter, a sculptor. He was um, a genius in general. He was an engineer. He was a, a philosopher. He was many things. And actually, he always said that he had two sources of inspiration. The first one, he had some guides. He was not saying, he used the word angels. He said, I have angels giving me some, uh, some, uh, some information. Concretely, it was a kind of channel and he could download and he had a good communication. He was a good medium with the uh, invisible words, as you say, entity, spirit, and so on. So he had some information first. But it was not my point. My point was essentially, was he always said, I find inspiration essentially through the observation of nature. And by the way, I went to Le Clos Lucet where he lived. He has an amazing garden, very beautiful. I, 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 I went here at times because I really love this presence and the, 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 the place there. And uh, actually, you find equivalent in nature, for example, the the, the, when he was observing the, 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 the birds flying and then he created machines to fly and this kind of thing or the, the river and a wheel and so on so he was inspired by this and actually we can go further beyond of the observation is not only observation passively it's an observation it's active observation and it becomes the limits with down-to-earth perception, physical perception, and towards metaphysical. What is it? And this is from the, I like this sentence from the great uh, French uh, writer uh, Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo is an equivalent of uh, Shakespeare for British literature. He's absolutely not um, a guru or a spiritual person and so on. He's uh, basically a writer. So it just say, it's a sad thing to consider that uh, nature talks and the mind kind remains deaf. So, what he tried to say, he tried to reveal the fact that indeed there is a subtle communication with nature. Nature sings. There is different sounds, but not only uh, sounds of, uh, let's say, uh, hairs and vibration and so on. It's beyond of that. It's the fact to feel this cosmic breath for which the Veda said, the Hindu text, sacred text said, try to find the place which is already yours in this cosmic uh, breath. Concretely, you are an alveola and you are a component of it. And feeling, experiencing thanks to nature, our true nature, the fact we are not dissociate from it, but we are part of it. It is our mother. We can uh, even, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, not deify it, but let's say we can personalize nature, Mother Earth or Gaia, whatever, but in the sense of uh, this is not, for Rainer, it's not external. It is a complementarity, and this is the big problem of this society is the fact we separate. So this notion of being connected to nature brings you actually a lot of synchronicities, as you say, non-causality. It means that you think about something and you will have the answer through a way of, uh, I don't know, the bees are uh, uh, organizing uh, themselves and so on. You can find a solution from uh, an issue, a problem you had in mind, and you will find in the nature. So it's like sending you 
certain messages, some, uh, let's say, um, uh, codes that you can only personally, according to your sensitivity, according to this moment, you can decipher, you can, um, let's say, unveil in a certain extent, okay? So, this is not stimulating when you are reconnected to that, to nature, it's not that you stimulate them, you are just more sensitive, and sensitive means literally that your senses are more developed, so five senses, and the more you develop your five senses, the mindfulness and so on, the more you develop your third eye, as to say, your intuition, and your intuition is a kind of GPS, it's um, your field of consciousness is linked also to your unconsciousness, but in a certain extent is your radar, is around you, is a bubble, and which has no, let's say, no limits, is absolutely um, borderless, and you can extend it, you can extend your field of consciousness until uh, even the cloud, until the, um, the collective uh, unconsciousness and the collective unthinking. So, there is no limits actually, it's only up to us in a certain extent. So we can have an access to the consciousness, the Akashic record, um, a kind of library, um, a library. So this is the point. And the more you develop that, the sensitivity, the more you are receptive. So you catch, you get. And uh, a lot of people they have, but it's like in a book, read The Little Prince, um, watch uh, Charlie Chaplin, Modern Times, and so on, or The Dictator, and if you're a kid, um, you will just uh, laugh, and you say, ah, it's funny, like a clown, like a joker, yeah. But then there is a lot of subtle messages hidden thereby, and same for The Little Prince, it's for the kids, but it's also for the inner child, it is also for adults, it's the same for everything. In all my books, I systematically insert a lot of subtle messages. And in nature, there are lots. And for this, is is really fascinating, is really entertaining, exciting, because the more you play this game, and the more the universe and the na nature is playful, I mean, with you. So it's, I mean, directly it stimulates a notion of funny aspect of life, and you can decipher, it's like um, enigmas, okay, like Indiana Jones, you try to, to find a secret, some, some different treasure, and so on, and it's really, really exciting, it really injects some colors in sometimes a black and white life, and at each level, each stage, it can be for down-to-earth perspective, and also more deeper, uh, uh, let's say, uh, consideration, so, but to come back to the point of synchronicity, admiration of nature in general, the ants, the orchestration of the ants, ant, uh, ant hill, or I don't know, uh, the bees, um, the, the hierarchy they have, the respect they have, the, the good coordination regarding the fact they are so numerous, there is never um, manifestation, a strike and so on, it's, uh, they, they really have a collective consciousness. The fact when the, 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 the birds are flying, you know, it's, uh, they are moving um, immediately at the same time. It's a question of field. It's not stimuli, it's a field, it's a field of consciousness. So they have a collective consciousness. So all this uh, brings you a kind of admiration. And actually, the fact to generate that, to be more synchronized with nature, allows you to get back to our true nature. Because the primitive, so-called primitive civilization, all of them, they have that. Naturally, for them, they cannot consider we separate it, okay? It's like if you have a battle uh, with your mom and you are inside, okay? It's absolutely uh, incredible for them. And actually, this is a kind of uh, evolution of civilization. It is not from yesterday, of course. It is, uh, we could consider that... Um, this is uh, since um, 16th century, 17th century, and so on, and it has been an evolution, and especially since uh, René Descartes, the French uh, philosopher, and by the way, he, didn't, he has not been really uh, perceived entirely because he was also uh, a spiritual guy. And, uh, but anyway, just uh, when he say, uh, I think, therefore I am, 
This is the notion of all should be demonstrated, okay? And um, in a certain extent, he separate the ego with nature. And uh, cutting in a certain extent the, um, let's say, the, the umbilical cord, you know, the nourishing umbilical cord. And uh, then the, the relationship with nature has been different. Because it has been a long evolution, but in a certain extent, um, you, humankind consider uh, nature like um, the slaves. But actually, it was also this uh, um, this supremacy of white men from this period, especially Christian, you know, to 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 enslave people, civilization, and to consider that only uh, a European white. Uh, um, uh, Protestant or Christian was uh, right and so on and uh, annihilating, destroying all the culture, different enslaving population and so on. It's just, just realize, huh? um, one century ago in states, uh, the first country in the world, uh, we treat uh, black people like animals. We have the right to, to, to punch them, to, to treat them worse than uh, animals. Uh, to kill them, and uh, was the case till in Australia till uh, 60s, 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 70s. There was segregation. There was some uh, space, some bus for for black people and for other even abo aborigines, the local minorities. They were there before, <laughs> and uh, also in South Africa. Imagine when I was 14 years old, it was still okay, okay. It was still the apartheid, it was legal till uh, 92, 93, something like this, when Mandela arrived uh, at the power. And before that, it was absolutely normal, normality, logic. So just, it, it was kind of uh, evolution of uh, mind can in that sense, the fact that nature is at our service, it is our slave, and we can uh, spoil it, we can pollute it, and we can explore uh, until the end, you know, like a Kleenex, you take it and you throw away. It's a bit the mentality, like a competition, like a struggle, like a, a thrive and so on. And we separate because actually we have been uh, in a certain extent um, uh, um, out, uh, let's say, uh, um, of ground of the Mother Earth, because we separate, uh, we diverse from it, but actually we suffer of this separation, which is not natural. The intensive um, uh, production, the intensive, uh, the massive production, and so on, um, uh, without respect of the cycles, uh, uh, different ones, huh? like uh, um, the, the, the rest of the Earth, uh, the, 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 the fallow, the nature cycle, and so on. Imagine, it's like you, if you take uh, uh, some, some, uh, some coffee all the time and you don't uh, sleep a minimum of few hours a day and during few few weeks like this, you're going to die in even few days after a few days. It's the same for the heart. There is this separation and not this collaboration. And despite the fact there is abundance in nature, the nature, the flowers doesn't choose uh, which individual they will um, spread its perfume, for example, or um, the, 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 the different elements of nature, the fruits and so on, are to anybody. So, and this separation is vital. I mean, the fact to reconnect to nature is vital because we are not vibrating anymore uh, correctively. That's why also this notion of neurotic society, we have been detached too much, you know. We are out of our natural energies. And the fact, you know, to be always in the concrete, in the cement, um, in, the, in the big cities. I live seven years in Paris and 10 years in Shanghai, 23, 24 millions of inhabitants, the whole population of Australia. So imagine full of big buildings and so on. Okay, there are some parks, it's a matter of fact, but it's not the same. And um, how you want to be balanced in terms of energy? Because everything we sow is energy. So this energy is radically different of the cement, is a matter of fact, right? 
and um, and this disconnection creates some nevrosis as a matter of fact and um, and actually this is interesting to to compare that to try to do some yoga some sports some aerobics or whatever um, with uh, you know a medieval um, armor in a certain extent uh, it's not really uh, practical huh? so it's not very convenient so it's the same principle so what I think is interesting is to come back to a normality and the normality uh, which is natural the natural process of life is to be in connection with nature this is not your our modern society is in a certain extent not really natural and you know even this um, preconcept ID uh, with bad label regarding paganism. Paganism, pagan, usually it's badly perceived, like unbeliever. It's not this at all. It's a nature spirituality without tags, label, institution of Christian and so on. But uh, initially, it's just the connection with um, invisible word, with nature everywhere. It means the spirit of nature. This is what we call uh, nowadays uh, animism, um, animism, all the phenomenon of shamanism and so on is this. It's just a link with nature deeply, profoundly. And uh, it's just, once again, I repeat myself, because they didn't have the official label. But, um, you know, this kind of preconcept idea is even the fake battle in between uh, politism, um, uh, monotheism and uh, politism. Okay, so polytheism, polytheo, theo means uh, God in, uh, in, uh, in Greek and poly, uh, civil. The fact to believe in different gods, like Hinduism, you have um, one God, and then a ramification with uh, officially uh, um, 33,333 uh, uh, gods, and even more, some people say even more. But anyway, just the symbol is what is like in the greek mythology there is zeus and then there is different uh, little gods which are simply an ability of god so at the the, 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 the pantheon at the top of the pyramid you have uh, brahma for hindus but it's the same for all types of polytheism okay so you have the big god the big boss let's say the ceo and then all of them they are ambassadors meaning they buy they are just an ability of it. It means an equivalent. You can be uh, a mother, you can be uh, the daughter, you can be uh, the, the good friend, you can be the teacher, you can be uh, in parallel uh, in the charity, you can be, and so on. You are the same person, right? It's the same. This is just an ability. Ganesh is an ability of Brahma. Uh, uh, Shiva is an ability of Brahma. Vishnu is an ability, and by the way, Vishnu, uh, Shiva, and so on is a triptych to be more precise. Brahma is the holistic vision, and then the triptych, concretely, the Trinity, is to understand more precisely. Because the fact to say all the time, even for the living, it's everywhere, through everything, the no faith, uh, everywhere, um, invisible, visible, everything, no faith, at the end, concretely, most of people, no clue. What is it? But everything, nothing. Uh, through everything, nothing. Uh, they don't understand. So finally, they become naturally, because it's too complex, it's too, let's say, blurred, it becomes um, far from themselves. So, and despite the fact it's everywhere and through them also. Okay? So let's come back to the point, but it's the same point for nature. We are not outside. Nature is a collaboration, it's not a competition, it's not a threat. And despite the fact there is some movement of the Mother Earth, but it's normal, it's like uh, uh, maturity, uh, sometimes you lose your, a bit of your skin, some, uh, some hair for when it's hot and so on, it's a normal process. And also, uh, nature could have the right as well to, to struggle when she feels uh, attacked as well for let's say, uh, um, to preserve also the little ants that we have sometimes, uh, it could be. But once again, you know, when you observe nature, right? um, the notion if um, a wolf goes to eat some chicken 
okay, do you say, oh, one, 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 life is unfair. Is nature is like this. So it's a kind of regulation. But even, you know, when there is um, movement of Mother Earth, it's like when you have something here, you <coughs> it's normal, right? When uh, Mother Earth does the same, I live here on the, on the plaque, so it shakes sometimes. We had a big earthquake, earthquake, um, earthquake, sorry, um, three years ago, something like this. And then we have several ones. Maybe I, I live six or seven of them. But the first one was quite a lot. It was 8.8. .8. So um, yeah, a lot of disaster um, around. And actually, when you feel that, you realize that you are nothing, and also even that. The notion on down to earth, the stability, the tangibility of heart, okay, down to earth is the expression to say really uh, materialistic, um, even that is not stable. So is under the lava and uh, it's fluctuating all the time, is moving all the time. And honestly, when you feel that, you feel definitely more humble and more, let's say, anchored in the present time, the present which is a gift. Well. Let's come back to the points, uh, more down to earth. Practically, I invite you to do this test. Try to go to a park, or ideally to forests, and just try to fix off something gray, okay? The grain of this shirt, the grain of it, the grain of nature, the grain of spirits, they are frequencies, they are hertz. We can measure, it would be the same for this one, the same for this um, herb, the same for this. Is Frequency. Okay, so concretely, when you see it, you know, you observe it. Actually, you are synchronizing your energy with it. So, concretely, you are combining both, and there is notion of symbiosis. It means that literally you reactivate these frequencies within you. This is the same phenomenon. The picture you have over there is recreating here, right? It's the same principle. It's just some chemi chemistry. And um, neuro, neuro, um, neuronal uh, connection, basically. So, but concretely, the activation of the green has an impact of the frequencies, and this is the the, the heart chakra, which is central. It is the fourth one. It's here. Okay. So concretely, when you are synchronized, you activate that and you vibrate together. And after a while, when you are really concentrated and you just let it go, you surrender and so on, step by step, it becomes a block. The object, the observator and the observation makes one. It's the same phenomenon when you are in a system of wowing, marveling at life, uh, landscape, uh, a scene and so on, and you are Wow, just like this, this moment of ecstasy, okay? This is eternal in a certain extent, and you are making one. This is an axis of a fragment of oneness, unity. So basically, I invite you to do the test for you to reactivate this notion of uh, um, receptivity, sensitivity um, towards nature, for you to give more space in your life. It will become more and more physiological, even vital, and then you will see what all the positive things. When you go to a forest, there is a phyton seed. These are little, um, uh, let's say, uh, components that you cannot see, invisible, but it's like um, it creates uh, hormones of happiness. So even for this, nature is really well done for everything. So it brings you, it has the natural, let's say, um, uh, uh, nourishing, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, nutrition, nutritional intakes for you. So it's really good for health, for having a balance, to find back a calm, because there is a calm. When you observe nature, there is a calm, and you synchronize to it. So it means that you recharge, in a certain extent, your batteries. Well, I invite you to, to meditate on these different elements actively, passively, intuitively. Watch the video several times, take notes, synthesize, eventually uh, try to restitute, to transmit to someone, to see, to visualize the degree of acknowledge, your degree of understanding what you reject, what you want to deepen, and so on. 
and also to share this video, eventually to see, to visualize the perception of other people and to create eventually to enlarge your field of consciousness. This is only one key. You are, the, you are shaping your master key and you open up the doors of the consciousness that you want. It's really up to you. Once again, all the roads lead to Rome and to home. Thank you for your attention. See you later.